We've got a couple of seconds to go. This is Nellie Deutsch, and we're starting our final class. I hate the word final, but uh, it's been wonderful. Um, it's been a really intensive month with lots of learning, and I'm going to miss it. I hope uh, people stick around so that uh, I have something to do. I'm going to be going on vacation, so uh, might not respond until July 10th. And then there's the Moodle Moot, which is the next venture, and I hope people will join that. In the meantime, we've got 10 seconds to go before countdown, and we'll be starting the Beyond Moodle Moot for the month of June. Hello, everybody, and welcome. Welcome to Going Beyond the Moodle MOOC. This is our final class. I hate that word, final. Uh, you'll get that in my introduction to the uh, Camtasia recording that I'm making. This is Nellie Deutsch. Uh, people are going to be coming in as we go. Uh, just let me know in the chat box if everything's okay. And uh, you can hear me. Tell me where you are and, uh, and what you're doing. And how are you doing? And anything else you'd like to add to the chat box? As I always say, the chat box is your faces. So, um, you know, feel free to chat away. This is not a face-to-face -face, uh, situation where we have to be polite. And chatting away is uh, the opposite of being polite. It's being polite. It's, um, so we've got Pablo from Ecuador. Oh, we've got lots of North Carolina, Quito, Ecuador. Hello, Maria and Harriet from Chicago. Wow. Um, let's see if there's a place in the world that's not represented. And if not, I'll be there. And Susan, good to see you all. And... Um, we're going to get started. All right, so as you're writing your names and um, people are coming in, this is being recorded through Camtasia as well as, so it's going to be on YouTube. And Vimeo is also being recorded through Wiz IQ. So for the final class, live class, um, we're going to uh, have a very interactive session, and I think you're going to love it. I know I am. Um, I've uh, added the link to where you'll be going okay, for this session. I've also added at the beginning of the chat, you'll see a link to the interactive uh, syllabus where everything is there. So just a reminder, use the syllabus. This is not the end. This is really a beginning. We're going to continue... Uh, there's a Moodle Moot coming up in uh, August, August 23rd to 25. And uh, those of you who still want to continue will be able to continue. Everything is going to be open. As I said at the beginning, it's time-based and it's not time-based, which means that you can continue interacting. I'll be around less because I'm taking a 10-day vacation after about seven years, but I'll be around as always. And um, you'll have a chance to get your own Moodle. I believe, hi Nancy, I believe that learning is a process and uh, why stop it? Okay, so the way to sustain the Moodle and continue Moodling is to get your own course. So I'm providing a free uh, course for anyone who wants to get their own course and practice and teach. The idea is for you to teach using Moodle. So there's a link there that you'll be able to um, access. It's in the PowerPoint presentation that's in the courseware on WizIQ. In addition, as I mentioned, there's the Moodle Moot, and you'll have a chance to uh, also join that. You can present as well. There are a few spots left to present. In addition, there's the YouTube playlist where I've added some of your videos. If your video is not there, uh, share it with me, and I'll add it to the Moodle MOOC playlist. I think it's really important that we have things aggregated. And you've done so many wonderful videos. Uh, you know, it's, it's so heartwarming 
to watch your videos. And now for our speakers for today. We have two speakers, uh, John Graves. John, I'm not sure whether you've got the, um, the hand up. If you could just raise your hand, I'll pass on the mic to you. Thomas, I hope you're feeling better. Anyone who's not feeling well, who hasn't been feeling well, um, I see something about the speed of the internet. If you get that speed of the internet, don't let it bother you. So John, I think you've raised your hand, which is great. Let's see if I can find you before uh, more people join in so I can pass on the mic. So while I'm passing on the mic to John, I'm going to see if Maria's here. I see Maria's here too. Great. All right, so John, I'm passing on the information as well as, okay, so a little bit about John. John um, is a doctoral student, PhD student studying uh, in New Zealand, uh, open source software development at Oakland University, Auckland. I was corrected, Auckland. Um, he's involved in everything that's technology and beyond, so it's not really only technology, but it's also passion for sharing. I don't know if I know anybody else who's so passionate about sharing and, and letting the world, and all this, of course, is uh, free. Um, and John will be sharing his slide speech, which is an incredible way to, um, to actually hear, and I love that. It's great for ESL, EFL students and language learners. Uh, I say that because I'm a language teacher, John. And I, uh, but there are other benefits, of course. I'm sure John is going to be sharing that. Um, that's John. Our uh, next speaker is uh, Maria Drozhkova, and who's also here. Uh, Maria, if you could, uh, I think I saw Maria D. There we are. Okay, I'm going to share um, the webcam with you. Uh, Dr. Maria Drozhkova and I met face to face. We organized a uh, conference at Ithaca College. Uh, I think in 2011, it was quite an experience since I'm not a math teacher, but it was math and arts, so I could fit in somehow. Um, again, Maria, too, is very passionate about sharing and collaborating. I think that's what this session is really about today. It's about uh, two people who do a lot of... Hi, Maria. Is that Maria? Um, a lot of sharing... Good to see you, um, and you'll hear more about that, and you can read uh, about Maria, and uh, that's it. I'd like to, uh, before we, to thank the facilitators of the uh, Moodle MOOC for doing such an awesome job and helping. All right, so we're going to, you want to flip a coin, you guys, or is it okay if John starts and Maria, just let me know. Maria, uh, are you able to speak? I don't hear you. You're not able to speak. I'll, I'll work on it. Oh, you just did. I heard you. I'm online, I think. <laughs> yes, good to hear your voice. It's been so long. I mean, two years. It seems like a long time. All right. So um, do you want to flip a coin or um, who wants to go first? Go ahead. Okay. Uh, All right. So John. Okay, go ahead. All right. So John. Okay. You're so nice. So John's going to start. That's okay. And um, let me just get your, um, you've got tools, John, so you can actually, I don't know what you want to start with this or with a PDF. Do you see the PDF next to it? I see there's two, going beyond the Moodle. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a Wikipedia. Socially responsible learning and making learning socially responsible. So Right, right. If you hover your mouse, you see exactly what's there. Perfect. All right. So, John, I'll let you take us on a tour. Okay. Uh, the two things I really want to convey today have to do with reach and redefinition. Uh, I've been uh, working for four years on a, a system that uh, allows us to make uh, talking presentations called slide speech. And it's meant to be a sequel to Wikipedia. And so the presentation I'm going to take you through very quickly here actually could be viewed online. Uh, and the presentation actually would deliver itself. The, the Etherpad and Google Doc uh, that I've uh, 
provided to accompany this presentation today have many links to these self-delivering presentations which allow you to study uh, uh, material on your own time at your own pace. But the slide you're seeing now is a comparison of the amount of time people spend on television and the amount of it took to build Wikipedia. And really the lesson from this is that uh, we could do a lot more um, to share if we all stopped watching so much television. <laughs> uh, everyone can hear me okay? Oh yeah, we... Yes, you're audible, John. Everything is cool. Great. So, uh, I, I want to address this idea of the, the iron triangle of education. The things that we're really trying to accomplish across the board are uh, providing higher quality, greater access, and if possible, to reduce costs. And if you have seen this before, if so, uh, do a thumbs up so I can get some sense of if I'm covering familiar ground here. Okay, uh, so quickly then, uh, the uh, idea is when we improve these things and are able to lower cost at the same time, that's really uh, ideal. But let's look at what the actual measurements of this iron triangle look like when we uh, use the U.S. Department of Education as a as a metric. Across the bottom, the budget of that department is sixty-eight billion dollars a year, and you know the uh, population of the United States is only three hundred and seventeen million people, uh, which means that that's as as the maximum amount that the the U.S. Department of Education could could actively access. But what happens when we put Wikipedia on this same graph? Well. You can't really see it. It's over on the, the left-hand edge of the screen there with over 500 million people. That's the reach that I'm, I'm talking about. And so let's zoom in a little bit and see if we can understand exactly what's going on here. Uh, the, the numbers for the Department of the Education here are, are going completely off the charts. Even below $5 million, we're just beginning to see the budget of Wikipedia uh, appearing. Uh, now we're down below... Uh, a billion dollars, five hundred million dollars, a hundred million dollars. We still don't see the same shape and relationship between cost and, and, and access that Wikipedia is delivering. But look at this. The budget of all of Wikipedia for an entire year is only forty two million dollars. And yet it reaches half a billion people every month. The amount of access, the quality of access, and the low cost of this collaboratively created resource is just phenomenal. So we've achieved with Wikipedia something that's a combination of quality and access and lowering of cost simply by and sharing our learning. So I want to introduce this concept of socially responsible learning where the uh, artifacts that you create in the process of your own learning become something you shared and that uh, ultimately saves everyone uh, from the costs of uh, and the time of having to reproduce all of this knowledge that's uh, actually already available. I see there's a, some question about the quality of, uh, of Wikipedia coming from Nancy and uh, the, um, the source of the data is uh, from the U.S. Department of uh, Education's uh, budget page, which it's very easy to Google that, and the uh, Wikipedia uh, reach and um, budget figures are available from a report card on, on Wikipedia's um, uh, monthly uh, activities and uh, their, uh, their published uh, financial uh, and, 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 and annual uh, you know, budgeting plans. So uh, the, the really, uh, uh, for this group, I'd really be curious to know, I've got uh, 
kind of four questions that I, I'm asking in both the, the Google Hangout and the, um, uh, I'm sorry, the, the Google document and the Etherpad. And the first one of these is, uh, how many students do you reach? Not teach, but reach, because uh, it may be that you're actually providing learning materials for uh, people who aren't your students. And if, if you could just start typing some numbers into the, the chat about how many students, when you prepare your lessons and learning materials, is it for 20 students in a room, 200 students? And uh, and then particularly, if, uh, as uh, Dr. Pulis says, 3 million, do you have actually the, the way of measuring that? To, to uh, uh, Are there some kind of analytics that, that count the number of visitors to your uh, your videos or to your websites? Because uh, all of these, these metrics start to become uh, very important and interesting for us uh, to Maria says one at a time. Yes, and the, the question is, how do you scale that one at a time to the the levels that that we're seeing um, from uh, resources like uh, Khan Academy? Now, I don't know if um, uh, I, I'm sure Khan Academy has, is familiar to this group, but uh, if you haven't. Uh, heard about it, uh, and, and, and again, in terms of the details, uh, there's uh, approximately 6 million students that are reached uh, by that online learning uh, resource uh, every month. So uh, th this is the potential that we have as uh, we reach out um, on, on, online to pick up with uh, learners wherever they may be. And the next question I have is, as a learner, how many teachers can you reach? So you know, if we're talking in a classroom situation of you know, 28 students for one teacher, looking back in the other direction, uh, if you're now going online for your learning, how many teachers? Dr. <laughs> Nellie says, thousands. Yeah, so you, it's a very different uh, situation where an individual learner now has much greater access than just merely the, the, the teachers that are physically available. Uh, and the, the particular places where educators can be looking today to, to connect up with other learners, and pardon me while I, I just reach over here to my... Uh, my other computer to paste in some some new links to the the etherpad uh, besides the uh, uh, the six million students uh, uh, that Khan Academy is serving you 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 have uh, two hundred thousand educators on Twitter and and they're beginning to organize to have events like this thing called virtual ed camp where um, anyone could come to a, a, a conference like uh, the big one, ISTE. I just did Access ISTE, and so I'm New Zealand, and, uh, and tried to watch as many of the, the, the sessions in San Antonio, you know, Texas, as I could at, at 1 o'clock in the morning. But uh, what, what we can do through Twitter is, is continually connect up with uh, a whole variety of other educators and learn from from one another uh, now the the links in the Google Doc and in in the chat uh, both uh, suggest uh, that you learn about something called the SAMR ladder SAMR stands for institution augmentation modification and redefinition which are again if I could have a thumbs up how many people have encountered SAMR before as a as a model for uh, understanding the uh, hierarchy of of uh, logical um, adoption. Okay, I'm getting a bunch of thumbs down, so let me just uh, um, talk about it for a, a moment. It was developed by um, Ruben Puentadura uh, there in Toronto, Nelly. Uh, so you you I would be really surprised, Nelly. Can I get a thumbs up from you that you've heard of Samer? 
Okay, SAMR uh, uh, really just makes the um, the progression very clear. From you know uh, typing to word processing is really substitution. It's a it's a different way of accomplishing the same thing. Augmentation means, as it suggests, that you're adding more on with the technology. Modification means that you're doing something in an entirely different way. Uh, I think one of the examples used in the presentation is the way Hans Rosling uh, takes what were previously you know, static graphics and makes them animated and to make the, the, uh, the ability of graphics to, to convey insights that much more powerful when they're moving. But then there's redefinition. And redefinition is where you actually are able to do things that you could never conceive of of, of doing before. And one of the things that we can really, we never could do before in a classroom setting is to, to share, to, to take student work as it's, it's been prepared. And Maria, you need some help finding the SAMR ladder. Uh, if someone could post that link in there. Uh, and reach out to the rest of the learning community with the, the, the work that you create. Now, uh, thank you, Nancy. So this leads us to our, our, our next couple of questions about our, our redefinition of, of the learning opportunity that's available to us online. And that is, how much of your student's time is actually being spent on the internet, on their mobile phone? on their tablet. And if we could get, get some numbers or uh, feedback from in the chat about how many hours per day you think students are spending. This includes gaming, of course. Uh, it's really quite amazing. Some of the statistics show that just having a smart mobile phone in your pocket means you're going to be accessing that device up to 150 times a day for different purposes. And there's begun uh, to be some actual research into this. Uh, the, I think the link I've posted uh, talks about the Teens and Technology report from the uh, the Pew uh, Trust that 95% uh, of teens are using the internet. 93% have a computer or access to one at home. 78% of teens uh, have a cell phone, and 37% of those are uh, smartphones, so they actually have internet access in the palm of their hand. Uh, and 23% of teens have a, a tablet computer. Now these uh, Results obviously are, are probably biased to they're, they're coming from a survey of, of uh, learners in the United States, but the the internet access is, is becoming something that is uh, global, uh, and uh, I really if I had more time I would love to share with you and I did share with you the links to the um, the, the Kleiner Perkins uh, uh, internet trends report, which shows just exactly how much uh, growth there has been in mobile internet access. All of which brings us to the the fourth question of how do we get students to share their learning and their content online? And let I'll take you quickly through a second PowerPoint uh, our PDF document here about socially responsible learning. This notion that as we create um, learning material, we could share it. Because learning is very much a, a function of sharing. Everybody seeing a sharing slide? Let me get a, a thumbs up just to make sure that my advancing the, the PDF is being reflected for everybody it is John. watching the, but John, the show. You may, Thanks. You may just want Great. to just go through the uh, the arrows. There are arrows if you see Next them page, like that. previous. Yep, yeah, I got it. Yeah. Yep. Okay. I see. So again, I, I point to Wikipedia as as a, a a case study of of how you know 21 billion pages of material 
is served out every month uh, for uh, those um, half a billion members. But if, if that was distributed equally around the planet, that would be you know, three pages per person per month at, at a cost of, of something on the order of you know, 10 cents a person per year. So if we can adopt anything similar for um, uh, developing and sharing learning materials, we can link these two things. Anytime we learn... learn something, we need to be sharing it. And anytime we share something, it's for the purpose of someone else learning it. I call this a kind of a recycling of uh, knowledge that, that, that isn't taking place today. I mean, if you think about the current model, where we teach, and then we test, and we grade an assignment, the next stop for that graded assignment is typically in somebody's drawer or garage or, or in the trash. But we can redefine the whole uh, learning experience to be one about making and using the making experience uh, to uh, capture our the teaching teaches the teacher is, is, the, is the phrase I really want you to take away. And uh, in the process of learning something, to create another learning experience or opportunity for the next student to come along, it puts the students right in the flow of synthesizing and uh, digesting and curating uh, all of this available knowledge so that subsequent learners are, are that much better uh, prepared uh, to, to make quick progress uh, and, and uh, reach ultimately, as we all hope our, our students do, those horizons of knowledge where they can actually contribute new knowledge. So I'm not alone in advocating for these, these kinds of uh, sharing and making activities. The Mozilla uh, Foundation is running a, a uh, global uh, maker party from June through September, uh, and they've got a wonderful uh, a website and, and uh, do face-to-face -face sessions where uh, people who are unfamiliar with some of the web technologies can uh, become acquainted with how you build web pages, what web pages are made out of, and then some of the beginnings of how you can learn how to, to code and, and create uh, programs that, uh, that work uh, in this online world. And there's a top-down initiative as well. Uh, uh, Richard Branson has recently launched this thing called the B-Team, which uh, aims to get business leaders to put uh, people and planet alongside profit and uh, use the, we need to think about sustainability and, and, and how we can take knowledge uh, and spread it into the, all of the places where it needs to be for us to grow in a, a healthy uh, world. Just, and I, I've been using this background of this leaf as, a, as a, again, an analogy. If, if we think of each of our lives and our students as a cell of this leaf, once they all are joined together and growing together, the, the, what we can create is beyond our, our imagination. And the, the way I think about this is what we needed and what Wikipedia, of course, provided was building blocks. For Wikipedia, it was just a very convenient thing, the, the encyclopedia article that multiple people could work on. But as we take more of these uh, learning objects, our, our learning experiences, and, and connect them together, this can accelerate the, the distribution and sharing of knowledge across all of these new mobile and, and web-based uh, environments. Uh, so sharing and learning become linked together. Uh, as, as Adam Bellow said at the ISDE uh, final keynote, sharing is caring. Uh, and it, it really is up to teachers to, to lead the way here uh, with this, this new idea of, of socially responsible learning. And I hope you'll um, come along to um, the uh, PLUS community 
that uh, uh, has been mentioned where I'm a moderator. It's called Using Google Apps as a Free Learning Management System. And if you'd like to be uh, uh, kept in, uh, informed about developments with my, my slide speech system, uh, I do have a, um, a survey uh, about today's presentation. It's now on line 72 of the Etherpad. And I'll try and post it back here into the uh, the chat. So if you could just give me a little bit of feedback on on this presentation and your thoughts, uh, I, I'd really appreciate it. Uh, what you can see also in the the Google Doc and the Etherpad are links to uh, presentations that Nelly ha has given uh, uh, recently at Ed Media. And I don't know if you want to say anything about that presentation, Nelly. Uh, but then we also have um, the uh, uh, a teaser for for, for Maria's talk. Uh, uh, so let me hand it over to you, uh, Nelly and Maria, and and thank you for the opportunity. I really am honored to be following in the wake of uh, uh, Brian Alexander and uh, and Stephen Downs, whose presentation has also been uh, uh, prepared for you as a uh, a talking slide presentation. If you look down through the the links in the in the provided uh, documents, thank you, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you so much, John. I hope you will have an opportunity, uh, perhaps at the end, uh, for a demo on how we can create a slide speech um, document, so that we can do it as fast as you do it. I'd like to time you because you said like okay. <laughs> I'd like to be able to do it as fast as you. So uh, that's something that I'm interested in. I'm sure others are also interested in creating it. I don't know if they know as much about it as I do, but um, the links are all there for uh, everyone who's interested in, uh, in this. I'm going to pass on the mic to Maria, who's going to share her work, and then we'll get back to you, John, okay, if that's okay. I hope it's not too late in New Zealand. Sounds great. <laughs> no problem. Great. All right. Can you hear me all right? Very well. Hi, Maria. Excellent. Hello. Uh, so, um, and uh, hello, everybody. Uh, we did not color coordinate with John, but it happened naturally. <laughs> and you will see that our topics coordinate very well, too, also naturally. That's because I think uh, we share a brain cell or something. <laughs> So anyway, uh, I want to talk about going beyond a MOOC or beyond gathering together and beyond sharing even. So let's see what happens. Uh, a while ago, Clay Shirky wrote a book. I love the name. Here comes everybody. So here we are, everybody. My volume's too low. What about now? Um, I can keep my microphone a bit closer here. OK. Um, so sharing is what John talked about. And sharing is what we do in some places like Wikipedia, but we do it with the course. So this course is coming to an end. Uh, and um, the course was great sharing. I'd like to ask you, what will you do with your students and with one another past sharing? So let's be silent for a bit, but type what you think when you think of it. What comes beyond sharing? Yes.
So uh, I will talk for a bit more and I see beautiful words in uh, the chat. I hope you will keep ty typing uh, what comes uh, beyond. So uh, beautiful words like grows the cycle of sharing, more sharing, knowledge, understanding. So uh, relationships, that's an interesting ideas. Um, I will meditate on them more. So I want to talk about dreams a bit. And kids dream about being astronauts or Jedi or ballerinas. And if you know how to look, you see that dreams always come true. I love that saying by uh, Janusz Korczak, an educator and the hero of children. So what comes with dreams? What are your dreams and your sharing? My dream is this. I want children, all the children everywhere to make beautiful mathematics and meaningful mathematics and all kinds of their own mathematics. I am all about that. I work for that. I work on that with my students, with parents, with teachers. So this uh, letter, another one, <laughs> comes from Shorky's book. So he talks about the levels of um, working together, being together. Love comes with sharing unity, publishing collaboratively. So that's the next level he talks about, collaboration, working together, making things together. Um, that comes beyond sharing in tribes and communities. And then the tribes who collaborated a lot can change things, that they can cause changes to happen. So people can go from sharing all the way to collective action. They can change the world. Well, uh, I want to look at some mathematics education examples, because that's my field. So this is an example of collaboration level. Uh, the art of problem solving is um, started about uh, more than 10 years ago. It's a large uh, group of people now in the hundreds of thousands speaking about reach, uh, they reach millions uh, with courses, materials, and an excellent organized site about problem solving, as you could guess. So these people come together and collaborate on making different learning happen. Uh, this is an example uh, that I, I like to use because it's a very active community. Once I assigned my graduate students the task of going to the Art of Problem Solving forum and answering a question that doesn't have any answers. And they couldn't find one. People answer so fast there. And there are usually several good answers. So that's uh, an active group loving one another in the con uh, con context of mathematics and problem solving. Um, Another example of uh, collaboration is Scratch from MIT. This is an open source collection of little applets. It teaches programming to millions um, of people all around the world. It's all open. Uh, if you go to that site, there are more than 3 million applets there that people made, children, everybody, teachers parents, just people who wanted to learn to program. And uh, of course, they have a math gallery. So that's another example of a collaborative group uh, with everything open and everything available. And uh, another example that's my, one of my favorite is uh, GeoGebra. Uh, this is another, um, this is another platform it's for making uh, 
geometry and algebra applets. So uh, people share, again, everything's open source. People share the applets. People share the lessons. And people ha have institutes and conferences. That's uh, a mathematical collaboration. So that's my project called Mobius Noodles. It's for making advanced mathematics available to young kids. So I want to see if we can get to the third level eventually. We're working on it with uh, several central people um, and uh, several hundred people who participate more or less actively, several thousand people who are involved and so on. There are circles of it. So we have blogs, we have uh, courses that we run on different platforms like P2PU. Uh, that's our sharing. It's all crowdsourced, crowdfunded, and uh, Creative Commons licensed. It's very open. And uh, we get to collaboration with some of the projects. So we're working on uh, Creative Commons books, uh, high quality, professionally edited and illustrated, but uh, crowdsourced books. And uh, we're working on a knowledge hub uh, that's also, uh, I would say, collaboration for young advanced mathematics knowledge. So we are running a, a course right now, an open course. It's uh, small um, compared um, about 70 people participate. We want to talk with everybody actively. So that's another example. Uh, we call it a mini MOOC. OK. And I want to get to changing the world eventually. So that's the dream part. And it has a lot of words here. Uh, and the words are for doing, redoing mathematics education through citizen science. So we want to track things, to, to have our own sustainable economies, to, to measure what's important to people, and so on. Uh, this project is growing. We'll see what happens to it. So I want to go to this levels again, because we can get stuck at sharing, so to speak. That's something I'm concerned about. Um, so sharing is telling stories. It's important, but it's a first step somewhere. And collaboration, of course, it's making new stories. It's developing your own ideas. But making new, whole new worlds where stories can happen. That's what it's all about, I think. I hope to get there. I hope you get there. So you make your stories. You make your world. Make your dreams. So uh, you have the presentation there. So you, you can uh, access the slides. I made a tiny URL. But I want to pause at this one and for people to think about their stories and their dreams and what they want to make when they make their own world. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Maria. Um, lots of ideas, things to think about. And, you know, I would ask um, if you know, the participants would like to add just a little bit of uh, their dream. What is your dream in after the MOOC? What would you like? Um, I think dreaming is so important. What would you like to see uh, for yourself, for others, and so on after the MOOC? Very important. Um, Maria, would you like to add the, uh, I don't have the link right now to your, um, to some of the areas that people can, uh, perhaps, oh, there it is, but it's not clickable. 
um, the slides are available, but just to some of your, uh, your current crowdsourcing area where people can perhaps join. I know there, there are a few math teachers that would be very interested and others who would like to share. I know that um, the participants, I know everybody actually, in the chat box um, from the MOOC, and they're all people that uh, have a passion for sharing, and, and I think this is just the exact um, topic for them to move forward. John, I'm going to uh, pass on the mic to you so you can uh, take us through the slide share and there's also a survey that you've just added. Okay, you want to? Yes. Yes, which has links in it. This is one of the great new things about the, the Google Forms is that uh, you can put uh, links right into your questionnaires. So if you need to explain something, um, uh, creating a slide speech presentation is, is really very simple. Uh, it, you, you already are very familiar with uh, using presentation tools, of which there are many. Uh, and uh, virtually all of them that I've encountered have a, a place for presenter notes, as they are called in Keynote, or speaker notes, as they're called in PowerPoint or in uh, the Google Docs tool. Uh, Sebastian um, asks, is slide speech available in various languages? What's interesting is that once you are um, using the, um, the system, uh, it, it has not been, been localized yet. I, I only have just really developed this as part of my, my PhD research, so we don't have, uh, uh, I, I, and I just learned yesterday from Maria's work uh, about uh, about that uh, translation service, what's it called? Content in or oh, I, I'm not remembering the name exactly like that. I thought it was very interesting that you could crowd crowd in. Thank you, Maria. Uh, that that helps you to take your material. So the voices that are available, Thomas points out, currently on our our server on the on the website are English and German. Uh, whereas uh, if you download the um, the plugin for LibreOffice. Now, LibreOffice and OpenOffice are another presentation tool like PowerPoint, but it's, it's free to have a full Office suite if, if you want to uh, work uh, with, with the open source tools. And, and our LibreOffice plugin allows you to type whatever you want into the speaker notes of, of your slides in LibreOffice and then use whatever voices you have your own PC to make a talking presentation. Now, that is, this is a computer voice, um, but what's really interesting is, uh, particularly on the Mac, they have voices in all kinds of languages. So uh, I'm going uh, onto YouTube here and uh, searching up a link for you, uh, Slide Speech Mac, uh, and uh, you'll see that there's a um, uh, example. YouTube video there where I, I tried to come up with as many different um, languages as I could where uh, uh, slide speech uh, speaks Finnish and Danish and uh, uh, the, 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 the title of the presentation, the, the video, is it's 49 seconds long, is slide speech driving many languages on a Mac. And I don't know if you'll be able to uh, hear that or I'll... Uh, Trust that at your convenience, you can you can go back and uh, listen to the uh, the the various voices that are available. So, what this ultimately means, though, with uh, thinking about English and and the connections that could be made here, uh, like extra normal, exactly. Except for what you're building uh, with the the text to speech is a is a PowerPoint presentation or a slide presentation that then also at the very end can have uh, an interactivity where it can link off to any other web resource. So really, some of the simplest ways you can use this tool are to take a few pictures and explain what's in the pictures, and then link to a website that um, uh, 
is related to those those pictures or if you're trying to explain something on the computer you can take screenshots and and uh, you know or, or excerpts of what's on your screen and then explain those so you can help people to learn how to use software or or just prepare them uh, in a very quick way to, to say all right if you go to this website you're going to be able to see all these 12 different things and then at their leisure they can actually and, and the system will immediately then link the web page where then they can do all of these wonderful interactions and simulations and you know there, there's so many wonderful things that are available on the internet today but they're all silent and slide speech really aims to give uh, educators a tool that you can talk about all of the things that are on online uh, and or that, that are a part of your subject uh, and um, you you can um, you can do that in a way that is so easy that you don't need the, the headset and the microphone. You don't need the, the video camera. You've already got the presentation software, and all you need to do is, is put a few words into the speaker notes of the slides, and the presentation's not only going to deliver itself, but there's a new model for, for making these kinds of uh, presentations, which is you publish and then you edit. See, video and everything else that involves a recording freezes your content so that you can't make any modifications to it. Uh, a YouTube video is, is, is not going to be able to be collaboratively edited and improved over time, which is what makes Wikipedia so great, is that it's not just that someone puts an article up there, it's that everyone else can then come and make that article better. So if we can do the same thing with learning, and if we can make presentations where everyone can come in and improve them, and then all those things can link together, we have the opportunity to build a Wikipedia scale learning resource that can be mapped and indexed. And because every word is written, you have the opportunity to use to search into that material and find precisely what you want in a way that YouTube doesn't really allow. Yeah, Nelly's convinced that YouTube is going to become searchable too, but it's very difficult. And, and, and Mozilla is working to, to add uh, mix capabilities to, to video as well with a project they call Popcorn Maker. But very, very time consuming. Um, what's really simple about slide speech is you're just word processing. Anytime you want to change the, the, the voiceover for a slide, you can just edit it, and, uh, and then it's, it's fun that uh, you can uh, send, uh, you can include into the, the, uh, the voice, uh, the computer voice, all kinds of voice gestures, you know, like you can have the computer laugh, ha, 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 or sigh, ha, and, and uh, that, which, which makes it very, uh, uh, it humanizes it in a way that it, it, the, the voices have gotten so good, it's not like Stephen Hawking anymore. You, 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 can suspend disbelief and you begin to, to think wow this is this was that really a person who recorded that or was it uh, the, the computer talking so I, I hope uh, all of this uh, uh, turns out to be something that we can all enjoy doing and, and that uh, uh, will help uh, Maria to get out her message about uh, activities involved in, in mathematics uh, and uh, uh, that everyone will be able to use it uh, in, in teaching uh, and uh, sharing their, their own knowledge and, and particularly their ex, uh, skills in, in conveying uh, knowledge to students, which again, think of the reach that's possible now where the moment you hit go at the end of a slide speech presentation, it's potentially playing on a mobile phone anywhere in the world. Thank you. Thank you so much, John. And I'd like to invite uh, John at this time to the Moodle Moot and everyone else so that, John, you can have a demonstration, a, an interactive session so that we can learn how to uh, do it. Not everyone um, finds things easy and sometimes we need to be taken through uh, the process. So that would be great, John, if, um, you know, I'll share the information with you to join the uh, the Moodle Moot, um, just Google it. It's um, actually MNVC13. This will be the uh, the third annual Moodle Moot. It's on August 23rd to 25, and it'll be in any language. If you'd like to do it in um, another language, that'll be fine. 
John is going to be translating it. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> we'll get translations. <laughs> but yes, it will be in any language that you wish because um, that's how things are moving. So that languages will no longer be barriers. So I'd like to thank everyone um, for joining the final Beyond Going the, Beyond the uh, Moodle Moot and uh, wish you all a uh, continued sharing and you know to think about what you're going to do you can continue working on the uh, Moodle Moot Moodle Moot sorry uh, you can continue working at your leisure you can go back get your own courses um, I'll keep saying the uh, syllabus. Uh, I think that I couldn't survive without Google Drive. I, I find Google Drive uh, very, very powerful um, as a way. And I think that what's going to happen is even with YouTube, I think that they're also going to allow people to share everything. And that, that's the direction that education is going. So uh, there's the link to the syllabus. I'd like to thank you. I hope you're feeling better, Thomas. <laughs> and I'd like to thank everyone for uh, making the Moodle Mook so special. I would like to call it a MOOL, Massive Open Online Learning, rather than course. I don't think that anything is coursey about it. <laughs> it's, it's more learning than anything. So thank you. Thank you, because uh, you've actually uh, did everything and made it all so wonderful and possible. So I'm looking forward to uh, continuing this. What's beyond the Moodle Mook? Mook is a Moodle Moot. And uh, everything in between. So thank you. Thank